this is the most is doing this podcast. And the reason why I'm doing this podcast after 12 years is I had a big aha last week. I was listening myself to another podcast and I heard something extraordinary. This is really, I don't know if you guys know Adam Apollo, incredibly articulate, smart gentleman. And he was saying about meditation and how hard it is for many people these days to meditate. We're all so busy and just to quiet the mind or, you know, even have the capacity literally time-wise. But he was saying like for him, sword fighting is meditation. As I was listening to him speak, I had this incredible aha and I realized, oh, that's what this show is for me. It's a meditation. It's the time when I'm, I feel like incredibly present, fully engrossed and engaged with my guests and their brilliance of what they have to share. And I'm always really excited. I feel like a little kid. And I also feel like I get to show up at a masterclass. So how does it get any better than to be doing something we truly love? And I'll be bringing Sage Kingsley Goddard on in a minute. And she is a healer. She's going to be talking about our boundaries. And I don't know about you, but as good as I've gotten loaded with many years, I have to say, I still am finding new places to use my voice in new ways. And we're also going to be talking about mother wound. So some of you may be resonating quite a bit with that. So um, I can hear Sage writing away. Um, and uh, so I want to talk to you just a little bit about becoming a co-creator, right? I know Sage is chomping at the bit. We will bring her on, but I really want to talk about becoming a co-creator. And this is what I know. This is a lot of the space I'm living in right now is about sort of taking back power and not living in or with, but making a different choice. And I'll explain because something I'll be talking about is on my finger here. Becoming a co-creator. So what do I mean by that? You know, all of us are learning, right? We're constantly evolving. And there's our true self. There's our highest self. And we can, as we access and align with that, manifest from a state of grace. And if we move further into that perspective, then we can see our role very clearly as creator, co-creator in life, in everything. Because core consciousness means that we are one with the creative consciousness of the universe. And that means that our intentions are manifested solely, either through will or through being a passive observer. What do you think? I don't know about being a passive observer, right? I mean, sometimes just being in the flow can be a lot of grace, but it also means that it's not through will, sheer will either. There's some, some other mechanism that happens. Think about how you create. So today, I suggest that we all step into the role of conscious partnership in creating life. And the state of creativity, it can be so humbling. It can be so elevating. It can be so blissful all at the same time. And here's a little story for you. I lost this ring. And oh, sorry, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm still on my middle finger. But I, I lost this ring, which I don't usually wear on the middle finger. And I was beside myself because I don't, you know, look, I used to make jewelry. Here's some of the jewelry I made. I used to have a jewelry company. I sold to five stores across the United States. I, I have jewelry, but I just have very few pieces that there is something significant. And this, this piece is significant. This giant, massive gold ring with this giant blue lapis lazuli, lazuli. I never said, have, even when I made jewelry, I never said it right, lazuli. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Gorgeous, like a midnight navy blue stone. Gold flakes in it. And it, this has felt like if I could be Wonder Woman, this has always been the ring I put on. And I'm a small person, and yet wearing big objects like this on my fingers there's just something like I am supposed to, right? It's it's meant to be. It, it really is a power object. Lost the ring beside myself. My mom has Alzheimer's. I'm, I'm helping her move and pack and this and that. And I'm thinking, did I leave it at my boyfriend's? Did I leave it, drop it in my place? Did I lose it at my mom's? Like, oh my God, so many exponential possibilities. And I have really searched my place looking and looking. Nothing. Gym bag, nothing. And I finally got pissed three days later and said, oh, okay, well, how did I forget? I totally went into this numb space and I forgot my own potency. So I took it back and I said to my ring, which I've done with 
every object I've ever lost. And I spoke to it because everything is energy. And I said, you have been on me. I have been on you. Our energies have connected. We know one another. You are mine. I am yours. Come back to me. I don't care how you materialize, but do it clearly, cleanly, and easily. I want you back now, 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 right? So mode B. And I literally came home, shower, I did this in the shower at the gym, came home, unpacked my gym bag. And I am telling you, I checked it three times, bam, ring at the bottom of the bag. So I'm telling you, it was a beautiful reminder for me to always bring back the power that I can speak to anything in the universe. And then I was sharing with a friend, okay, so if that's possible, what happens? And we hear you typing, girl. And what happens when you do that with wealth? You call in wealth. You know wealth. You've had money in your pocket. I don't care if it's been 50 cents or $50 or $50,000. You know money. Money knows you. Your energy knows it. Call it back in or a career or a love or a body or a health. You know these things. You've had these things this lifetime or another. I know I'm preaching right now, but I got to say when that reminder happened, sparked me all over the place. Just consider what's possible because we are all co creators. Yes, yes, yes. So I offer you the thought for today, which is I enjoy being a co-creator. So you have the power. So use the power. And if you are given the dream, you're also given the power to make it come true. This I know for sure. Uh, they Chardon said, the universe as we know it is a joint product of the observer and the observed. Thank you for joining us today on the show. Dare to Dream has been nominated for two People's Pod Podcast Choice Awards. This show is available on over 40 syndicated outlets. And if you want, and I hope you do, subscribe. Because if you love this show, and God, I, I just love hearing from you folks. It means so much to me. Really, when I consider what my numbers are, and this is not just me, this is every podcaster and radio person. When I consider my numbers compared to how many people take a moment to write in how much they enjoy the show or what they got from the guest or how they're changing their life, ugh, the numbers and percentages are off. So do it, do it, do it. I love to hear from you. And I always write back. You can subscribe and have this show, bingo, for free, come into your inbox. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, YouTube, BBS Radio, Pandora, iHeartRadio, just to name a few, and leave us a review. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do gorgeous energy work out into the world. They are changing lives one person, one city, one country at a time. They are available worldwide. So if you want to do some amazing work and go someplace where you don't have to feel different, you can feel part of because this is your tribe, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. So my question to you is do you know how to stop overgiving and have badass boundaries? Do you want to know how to be better at receiving, allowing, receiving? My guest today is Sage Kingsley Goddard. She was voted the world's number one law of transfer of attraction. That was interesting. Law of attraction teacher. She is a transformationist. And she's known out in the world as a prosperous goddess. Sage has personally gone through spiritual fire and transformation from bankruptcy to over a million dollars, from homelessness to dream home, from divorced to married now 21 years to her twin flame soulmate. She lives and loves to the fullest. Sage is a highly gifted clairvoyant or a reader, Archangel Michael Channel and divine alignment coach. She's helped tens of thousands worldwide experience greater enlightenment, empowerment, and enrichment by clearing out their blocks. She's a number one international best-selling author, a dynamic speaker, as well as a shamanic hypnotherapist. Reiki and money, Reiki master teacher and mother wound healer. You can find more about my guest at prosperousgoddess.com. And I welcome the beautiful Sage Kingsley Goddard. Hooray! Oh my gosh, Debbie, you are so right on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love your story about the ring. Thank you so much for having me here on Dare to Dream. This is just one of the best podcasts anywhere. And everybody listening totally should jump into the Dare to Dream tribe here because mm -hmm. all of your guests 
are phenomenal and are really wise and loving and visionary world changers. So it's an honor to be here among this esteemed group of world changing people. <laughs> Welcome so to the fold, you. baby. Yeah. Yay! It's so great to have you. And and I love how we met and I love how our relationship is starting and, and it's a new and I'm fascinated by what you're doing and being and creating in the world. When you and I, Sage, spoke recently, you made it clear that what we are working on once it's healed, you made this remark to me and I made note of it. You said what when we're working on something and then we heal it it becomes ours to master and then teach, which was a beautiful way of how I've said it out in the world, like your wound becomes your gift, your mess becomes your message. And I really concur. And the subject I know we agreed to talk about today is about overgiving boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I wanna start first with you and find out, is this something in your life you've had to master or uh, be a process around did you have a journey around boundaries and over giving yourself oh my goodness heavens yes <laughs> yeah absolutely i i am a walking textbook case of mm -hmm. everything that i teach and some mm -hmm. things i learned the hard way some things i learned the easy way and it's my joy to help others learn the easier way right because who doesn't want that who wants the easy way <laughs> right <laughs> I know, exactly. And for me, the issue of overgiving and not receiving, um, it affected me health-wise, as well as with abundance, as well as with a just stream of Mr. Not Quite Right after another mm -hmm. <laughs> and revolving door of painful relationships. So all of those life areas, everything, you know, health, wealth, love, happiness was imp impeded by that. And the first book that spirit wrote through me was called radiant radical self-love and now it's just an online course radiant radical self-love but i had to learn that myself so all of that information that came through about learning to open learning to allow learning to receive really deepening my self-love because i thought i loved myself i mean most people think yeah yeah i love myself you know i want the best in life of course i do but there's there was something else there were layers I call it layers, levels, and lifetimes of junk and gunk that was in the way. And life is so much easier and so much more of an experience of freedom. You and I were talking about freedom and how important that is. Financial freedom, time freedom, location freedom. And that's what I'm all about helping people to achieve. But it really isn't just about the actions. The actions are important. We definitely need to do action and not just be like singing kumbaya and praying and meditating all day long, right? <laughs> you know, we need to take action. But if we don't take aligned action at the right time and we haven't cleared enough of the blocks out and done our magnetism for attracting what we really want, if we're not even clear about what we want, then all these actions are just going to be like the hamster wheel. You know, I'm working really hard and I'm going nowhere fast, you know, kind of thing. So that's the shortish answer to your really important question. I'm glad that you asked that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, if see. that's true about us having a core wound, taking it on to be healed, then mastering it, then I assumed you would have, and you're very good at teaching this, that you would have something around this. I decided I wanted so much because I feel like, first of all, I feel like the subject is huge. It is. This is several shows right here. <laughs> yeah. And a, and a class and more. Yeah, oh absolutely. Like it's, you know, even with what I teach, Sage, because I teach visibility, I teach how to be exquisite, mm -hmm. how to use media, how to be interviewed, how to write a book, how to become yeah. a best seller. I coach people on this. But I have to say, even with this, to create those things, you need boundaries because you, you need time and capacity to become way bigger, play a way bigger game than you've been playing. You need boundaries, right? To say, hell yes, I am that. I Absolutely. am an expert. I deserve my voice to be heard. You need boundaries against any of those limitations you've been walking around with that no longer serve you. So I love this subject. And I'm going to pepper some of our conversation with some quotes. Good, wonderful. I elevate this, right? So let's start. It. With, it was Rachel Wolchin who said, givers need to set limits because takers rarely do. Mm -hmm. Oh, boom. That is so right on. 
That is so right on. And most of us, like our tribe, your tribe, my tribe, our collective tribe, we're heart-centered people. Yeah. We're spiritual people. We're people who are focusing on consciousness, who want to help others, who want to make a difference in the world. But if we keep giving, 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 we get burned out. And, you know, we keep putting ourselves on the back burner too much. We can't, we burn out, you know, you burn out. And we can't give from an empty cup, from an empty vessel. And that really shows up with interpersonal relationships, but it also shows up in business. It also shows up with our finances. And you're absolutely right. The, and the boundaries mean saying yes to what we really want, but it also means saying no. And one of my wise girlfriends, her mother taught her, she had a very wise mother, um, who taught her no is a complete sentence. <laughs> and how many of us givers and women, you know, we feel like we have to apologize for a no, or we have to have a but, or, you know, that kind of thing. And, so, you know, sometimes we need to really strengthen what I call your our no muscle so that we can also really utilize our yes muscle because mm. we, we can do anything, but we can't do everything. So it's so well, important to be discerning. Financial boundaries. What, what did you mean by that? Because you were giving a list of the ways it impacts us, but I, I had never considered that before. So how are finances impacted? Sure. So it really comes down to how we're spending our time mm -hmm. and also how we're investing, like the, the mentors that we're choosing, the programs that we're choosing, how mm -hmm. we're learning. There's a lot of people nowadays who have what I call bright, shiny program syndrome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, I need that. I need that one. I need that one. I need that one. I need that one. And I actually had one person who signed up for one of my courses told me she was in 10 other programs at the same time. And I'm like, girlfriend, stop the bleeding already. Like, it's insanity. Like, stop the insanity. So we gave, we gave her a chance to kind of take a hold for starting hours until she could kind of cross some of her off, off her checklist. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy. So, you know, we have to have discernment and the intuition is such an important part of that because otherwise we get caught up in other people's excitement Mm -hmm. right? Or what someone else thinks that we should do. The truth is really within us. Accessing our highest truth. There are times when we can benefit from an intuitive guide. I really feel like everybody needs more intuitive development training because that's what I'm all about. So you don't have to keep coming to me for readings or someone else or this person or that person, but you can read for yourself as much as possible. You know, and that discernment and trusting. We're all connected. 24-7, 365, infinity, as I like to say. We just okay. have stuff in the way, yeah. you know, of that. So, I'm yeah, curious. I hope that answered your question a bit. When you, when I was, so when I was opening the show, I heard you furiously writing, and then I heard you furiously typing, and the audience did too. Huh? What was, what was going on? What was on fire for you? What was, <laughs> what was I was speaking? Because I felt you too at the same time. <laughs> I am so on fire about all of this. It's just like amazing. You know, I definitely want to get into the, the issues of the male and female energy and the mother wound um, and what I was writing was uh, about that, that mother wound and that we're we are conscious creators mm -hmm. with our universe. I call it Y-O-U universe, the universe, because everything out here is a reflection of, of in here. So mm -hmm. what I would love to share, Debbie, is I think it helps to have a framework because we can go here and here and here, and we have lots of, you and I could talk for like 20 hours, like totally. <laughs> if they just keep the tea and coffee and healthy food coming, you know, <laughs> right? I mean, we have so much to share and we're, we're such kindred spirits. Mm -hmm. I think a really important framework is that there's, there's three keys to manifesting your dream life. And thank you for sharing what you did about my journey when you were sharing my bio. Some people might not know that one of our courses was actually voted the number one love attraction program in the world when it came out a few years ago. But that, that the accolade isn't as important to me as the fact that it means I can help more people. That's, that's what's the great thing about that, right? But what makes this unique like the approach to law of attraction is that we're, we go deeper and higher. And this is what I mean. So the first thing we have to do is define. And we have a three-step process. Define, align, shine. I like to play with words, so I like to rhyme. <laughs> so I'm a poet and I know it. Sometimes I show it, right? <laughs> so define means we need to be clear about what we want. Mm -hmm. 
It's funny because the synchronicity of the universe driving home this morning, just today, I heard the Joe Jackson song. I'm an 80s music girl. Uh, mm -hmm. You might be too. You remember Joe Jackson? And he had a song called, it went like this. You can't get what you want till you know what you want. You know, and it's like, all oh, right. So back in the 80s, Joe Jackson was preaching it that we need to know what we want. There's also the concept that sometimes God, God as universe knows something even better. So I always add the cover my butt clause like this or something even better. Thy will be done. But but it does help to have a clear vision. And some people dream too big and they're like pie in the sky and then they get caught up in you know, oh yeah, I'm going to make a million dollars a month and, you know, this year. And then when they don't reach that goal, they feel like a failure. So sometimes we have to kind of scale up to things and make it, you know, realistic, but stretch a little bit more than what feels realistic. But most people, I think, dream too small. Wouldn't you agree, Debbie? That they, they might not actually visualize their full potential of how amazing they are and what a bigger impact they can have. And people like you who help with that stepping up bigger in the world, you know, you're, that's what your program is, Dare to Dream. It's like, hey, you know, you're put here for a bigger purpose. You are put here to have a bigger impact and leave a bigger yeah. legacy. Yeah, so that defining um, is knowing what you want, it's also trusting your intuition. And I know I say that, I'm probably gonna say that word like 17 times in this hour together because I am such, you know, I'm so on that soapbox that, we, you know, when we trust our intuition and we're living more intuitively, that power within us, like you were talking about your magic experience with your ring. And that was your intuition that said to you, wait a minute, mm. I have the power to do this. I can summon my ring back. My ring and I are friends. I just need to do this thing, right? I don't have to be caught up in this emotional, you know, wig out. I can go, wait, I've got the power. I'm just going to reach that out. I call it reaching out with your spirit hands, you know, mm. or there's another technique I call, I use for lost objects, which I call the golden fish fishing line the golden fishing line you can tap your third eye picture a golden cord send it out to your whatever it is you want to bring in it could be a lost object but it could also be your twin flame soulmate it could also be your perfect mm -hmm. job your wonderful clients your dream home whatever your new car and you bring it in and when it lands in your third eye it lands then down into your heart and your hands and you're like yes here it is woohoo and you feel that that energy of that, woohoo, yes, here it is. Thank you. Thank you for coming to me, you know? So there's so many techniques for that, right? That's one that it works so fast when we use those techniques that are really aligned for us and that are right for us. So trusting our intuition, clear vision, dreaming the right size dream, and knowing that we, that we deserve that, you know? So that's really kind of all um, the define step about the vision, right? And um, do you want to pipe in for a second? Because I'm, I'm, I can just go on and on, but jump in anytime, and then I can also tell you about more about the aligned step. But uh, what, yeah, yeah feel free to do that. I, I mean, okay. I have a couple of questions for you. Let's let's sure. get the rest of that process. Sure, we'll go through the three. What I do want to say is for people who would like to see, because Sage just did a demonstration of that so if you love visual and you'd like to follow along you can also go to youtube.com slash debbie dashinger nice. and you can watch this and of course the replay will be there at infinitum amen and debbie is d-e-b-i and dashinger is d is in david a c h i n g e r spell the name right and you reach gold okay my love. beautiful is it define, shine, align, or define, define align, align shine. shine? Okay. Right. And for different goals that we have in life, we might be kind of more at one step and something else, we might be more at the other. And we are doing them simultaneously and concurrently. Um, but if you're not yet living your dream life in some area of your life, I guarantee it means you need to go deeper with one or more of these. Either mm -hmm. your divine needs more expansion, more clarity, more intuition brought in there or your align or your shine. So let's pop into align. So align is more about the healing. It's more about the energy. You know, the define is like, what do I want? What do I deserve? Giving myself permission to desire that and to ask the universe for that. 
And the align is, okay, is there some way in which I've been getting in my own way? Is there something mm -hmm. preventing me? Have I been preventing myself in some way from living this, right? Because the outer is absolutely always, and I know they talk about this in access consciousness too, it's, you know, aligning, you have to ask those right questions and you have to align. So what I work with, and, and thank you for uh, talking about my healing work, it's, Soul healing would really be the best way to describe it. It's energy healing. Yes, there's heart. It's body, mind, heart, and soul. But what I have seen, and I've been a healer for 26 years. Wow, that makes me sound really old, right? <laughs> I am just the perfect age to be me, right? <laughs> um, that, that's a lot of years. Um, what I've seen is that the root causes for things are often at the soul level. And that could be past life. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Past life stuff. It could be ancestral and mm -hmm. familial, mm -hmm. like it's from your mother's side, your mm -hmm. father's side. It could even be prior to their lifetime. There is definitely stuff from childhood. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's even in utero, mm -hmm. which is also kind of coming under familial, you know, ancestral. Most of the time, the original causes are prior to this lifetime, which means we have to actually heal it at the root cause and most people don't know how to heal their own root causes or even if they know how and they have tools and they're like a super powerful healer we tend to need support for that because it's kind of that shadow work it's that deep dark dusty musty ugh, you know kind of heavy most people could change things they would, but they don't have access. Like they know something's off. They can see right. a repeated pattern, a repeated result. They don't want it to keep happening. But exactly. yeah, it's very difficult. So can I take what you're saying and, and use an example and let's explore that a little bit? Sure, please do. So here we have define, align, shine. And I'm assuming shine means ta-da, you put the yeah, light sure. out into the world. Yeah, and it's the action and it's getting it out into the world. Exactly, right? Yeah, powerful. Dare to define, align, and shine. So yeah. I, I'm going to mix the two together. Boundaries and mother, core mother wound. Mm -hmm. So um, I think anyone who's a healer or reads energy, look, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, right? I'm totally transparent. I did not grow up under great conditions mm -hmm. and it was very uh, difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. And I am at a place in my life right now where my mother has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I would say, and I could be really off with this number, but is my guesstimation, she's about 65% capacity, meaning 65% lucidity. Mm -hmm. I feel very grateful for that, really mm -hmm. grateful. I'm the only one here in the West Coast. My family in the East Coast, two male members are really pitching in. But being the only one here physically, it is effing exhausting. Absolutely. And it's every effing day. And it's Absolutely. constant throughout the day and constant throughout the night. There is no fire that goes out. The fire is freaking blazing over every hilltop. Wow. And I mean, yeah, sometimes I just break down because I'm finite. So I'm finding a new way to use my voice doesn't mean it's always received, you know, uh, but I'm finding a kind but clear way to say, hey, man, there's only so much of me and I can't do that, but I can do this. Right. I'm still using it and I'm finding boundaries. I'm also clear in the insanity where I could step back and go, why me? Why did I have a difficult mom, but I'm the one taking care of her? Why am I not able at a time when I've been called to become a healer clearly from the divine at a much higher level, and I'm really wanting to step into that, am I being taken so off course because my life is kind of no longer my own? And at the same time, I have this higher awareness happening, which is I am so amazed and grateful and humbled by the perfection of life by a mother who the, for the first time in my life says, I love you, I had to wait this long. By a mother who said last night that I'm one of her best friends. I mean, anyone who knows what it's been like, this is really amazing healing stuff. And that I'm showing up for somebody with a caring, kind heart, a frustrated, resentful heart sometimes, but also kind, loving, and caring. That's, I recognize the potential for healing. 
but I, but, but there's a lot swirling and all that. There is mother right. wound. There is where are my boundaries? And, and if I speak up that sometimes I feel guilty because this st stuff still has to get done. Where does it begin and end? And how do I extricate myself and have a life? And I want to go to a holiday party. And yeah. so I, because this is a big example I'm yes. giving to you, but I want to give something that big and deep for mm -hmm. people to have some experience of you. Mm -hmm. and what's possible and they can maybe see themselves in this. So may I turn that over to you? Yes, absolutely. And first I really wanna honor you mm -hmm. for your deep, authentic, raw, totally real heart share. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of truth telling and self love to do that. Mm -hmm. And I love that about you, Debbie. I'm like that too with my tribe where I don't try to present that like my life is always perfect. And, you know, I, I'm inhuman. I'm some kind of supernatural, like, oh, she channels angels. Like she's like superhuman. We're all human. Yeah. And we have stuff. And no matter how evolved we are or how powerful of a manifester we are, we're going to have painful situations in life like mm -hmm. this with your mom. And um, with your mom, let me focus on you and your mom. And then I'll share a little bit about what's going on with my mothers. I actually have two mothers which can be double blessing and also double wound. <laughs> so it's like twice as much potential for healing and twice as much stuff to heal. Um, I was adopted, so that's why I have two mothers and they're both very much in my life. Um, with your mom, the issue of boundaries, uh, it, it affects life balance, okay? So, you want to go to a holiday party, but part of you is like pulled here. Well, but mom needs me. But the thing with mom needs me is no matter how much you give in this situation, there'll still be a feeling that I could give more or it's not enough or it's not enough for her. Maybe I feel it was enough, but maybe she doesn't feel it's enough. Or what if something happens and she's having a hard day or, you know, the monkey mind and the kind of guilt part of you can just have a field day with all that. And the truth is, not only is there only one of you, but you deserve to have a healthy and balanced life. And if you don't maintain your self-care yeah. and your healthy boundaries, you won't be able to show up for mom. You won't be able to show up for your people that you serve. You won't be able to show up for your, your beautiful partner or anyone in your life, your puppy, puppies, two puppies, one puppy. <laughs> when we were sharing puppies the other day, <laughs> you know, we have to put self and spirit first. That's a mantra. You guys, mm -hmm. self and spirit first. If there's one thing you take away from this show, that's one of the things to take away from the show, self and spirit first. Archangel Michael taught me that it's not selfish to take care of ourselves. It's self bliss. So when we oh, think, when we think selfish, we place that with self bliss. There's a reframe right there. Okay. Because when we have the self bliss, we then radiate at that higher level. We're vibrating at that higher level. We can give more. We're overflowing. Mm -hmm. And even if someone out here is still doing their S H I T, you know what I, they're still doing <laughs> their thing, you know, they're still doing their pattern. Mom is still momming, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We don't take it as hard. We don't take it personally. We go, oh, you know, that's mom. She's doing her thing. It's actually not about me. It's really not about me. It's almost never about us. Right. When someone out here is doing their thing, even if it seems uh, disrespectful or narcissistic um, or judgmental or negative or whatever, you know. I will say along those it's lines, I love about it. Us. It's what what Sage said, and I'm, I'm going to post it somewhere, not selfish, it's selfless. selfless. Fantastic. I want to say that I have non-negotiables. I exercise every morning, period. Nobody gets to come in and, and make a choice. That is mine. I love it. Yeah. I need it. I want it. This morning, I went to yoga, and they had yeah. singing bowls. And I, and like, also like, here's the interesting thing about boundaries I find too. It's never one thing. Nothing's one thing. Not one right. person is one thing, not one situation. Sure. So if anyone's listening going, oh, poor Debbie, awesome. I'll take it. <laughs> but I'll also say my life is effing amazing. 
I also have beautiful things. And this morning I was in deep gratitude, like, oh my God, I'm just allowing the sound of these gorgeous two women playing at the same time, singing, mm. washing over me while I'm practicing yoga for an hour. How did I get so lucky, you know, to be right here right now? What a beautiful gift I, I receive, I receive. So, the, you know, life is many things. I think when we make boundaries, it's also really important to keep our eyes and hearts open to all the magnificence that is concurrently happening. Very true. Gratitude is a magnet for blessings. Mm -hmm. And it opens the faucet for more blessings. And it also helps us acknowledge and actually feel. Like I could feel the energy as you were sharing that, sweetie. It was like, wow. Mm -hmm how blessed am I? It wasn't just at the head level. You were in the moment of, I am blessed in this moment, blessed and blissed, as I like to say. <laughs> so you are, and that's where we're in the present moment. You know, I, I've been a meditation teacher for like 20 something years. And we talk a lot about mindfulness. Um, but what I like to bring into that is also heartfulness. Because mindful is like, okay, I'm conscious, I'm aware, I'm present, I'm, I'm right here right now. But when we get that into the heartfulness too, that's where we have that, ah, it's okay. Mm. This is going on in my life and it's okay. This is going on and I'm okay. I am love. I am lovable. I am loved. I am blessed. And it's so important. So that helps to, with the boundaries, you know, having that present moment awareness, present moment, beautiful moment is a beautiful mm. breath mantra. In fact, let's do that together for just a moment. Let's all do present moment, beautiful moment. Would that be okay? Yes, I'd love that. Love let's that. do yeah. that. Let's take a few breaths with that. And you can just visualize that. You don't have to say it out loud. Just think about present moment, beautiful moment. And now I'm going to invite you to do it a slightly different way. If you had your eyes closed, do it with your eyes open mm. or vice versa. Okay. okay. And again, pleasant moment. Present moment. Beautiful present moment. moment. Isn't that how you changed it already? <laughs> present it present. It's a pleasant moment. present. So there you go. Don't get scared by the silence. I might just talk as you close your eyes because when this goes to radio, of course, radio hates silence. It'll put a commercial in. So just for those of you, if you're going to close your eyes or keep your eyes open now, Sage has said, Present moment, beautiful moment. Hmm. Present moment, beautiful moment. Thank you for joining us with that. When you do that with your eyes closed, it tends to help you focus on the beauty within. That's within you, the beauty in your heart. And when you do it with your eyes open, you can actually do it as a present moment, like full body sensory awareness kind of exercise, which also takes you out of your monkey mind. And it just reduces the stress. Mm. It's amazing. From stressings to blessings. Hooray. Oh, woman. <laughs> Simple. I'm a word wizard. Play with friends. words all the time. Words. My husband is an artist, and I am just like a word artist. I'm just always doing this, playing with words. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Oh, God, this is good stuff. I have no idea. For there book writing, this, this is like bing, 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 bing. I'm there a meme you. generator, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you probably have such a gift with that. Oh, that could be mm. something we talk about offline because I love that. Um, I want to say just another quote here Warren Buffett. The difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. Oh, boom. Exactly. Oh, that is so good. So we're going to take a really quick break here just to let you know, this is Dare to Dream. I feature really successful leaders. And what would it take? For you to get yourself out there to have ease with your career your message your business your branding i run the ultimate visibility program it's called the ultimate visibility formula and we're about to roll out a new class this is how to get interviewed how to be seen as an expert 
and how to be exquisite while you're being interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less. I coach you live. We have people from all over the world join. It is debbid.net slash visibility. That's where you sign up. We've got a special running right now. And uh, why is it so exquisite? Well, it's exquisite when you know how to be interviewed because you can launch a book, launch a product, fill a workshop, run a business, become a coach, you decide. But when you know the entire system, the how to get a yes, so you get invited into the show in the first place, and then when you're on the show, how to be confident, calm, and sassy, and do an amazing job being you and really delivering content. And then the afterlife, how do you develop the relationship with the influencer? How do you get results? How do you repurpose your interview? That's where I come in. It's debbid.net slash visibility. And if you feel it, you know it's yours to join. And my people are often much like Sage and otherwise. So just know that if you feel it, it's because we're meant to work together. So this is Debbie Dashinger. This is the award-winning Dare to, Gre Dare to Dream podcast. I am interviewing Sage Kingsley Goddard, aka the Prosperous Goddess, a highly gifted, intuitive archangel, Michael and Divine Mother Channel. You can find Sage at prosperousgoddess.com. And uh, Sage, Hmm. This is, I think, because you brought up mother wound. I want to ask you, does a mother wound affect, and it may not be really clearly delineated, but uh, does a mother wound affect men and women differently or can it often overlap? Great question. So let's talk about the, the causes of mother wound and the forms it can take because there's a yes and no answer to that. Okay. So what, obviously everyone has a mother or had a mother, right? Mm -hmm. Your mother might be on the other side. You might or might not have known your mother. You might have had more than one mother figure in your life. Mm -hmm. I actually have two mothers because I was adopted. That's kind of an unusual situation. But people can also have a stepmother or someone yeah. who served as a mother role or a grandmother who was very powerful in their life, you know, in part mm -hmm. of their life. So all these people would be like a mother figure and men as well as women have that, but you know. But there's also a whole nother aspect to the mother wound, which is women as a mother mm -hmm. or women who wanted to become a mother but didn't have that opportunity or mm -hmm. women who had a miscarriage or an abortion or a child who passed away or a child who they're estranged mm -hmm. from. So there's a lot of other aspects for women about the whole issue of self as mother or self not as mother, right? So for that, that would be something unique to women. F men could have a father, whole set of father you know, wound issues with that. But the thing with the mother wound too, is that our mother is our first teacher. Our mother is the first one who loves us and she either loved us really, really well or not so well or really not well, <laughs> kind of, or kind of sometimes yes, sometimes not. And all of our mothers, all of our human mothers are human. So they couldn't by definition have done a perfect job. There are, there is a spectrum though. There are people who have, you know, reasonably healthy relationships with their mothers and had very functional upbringings and are still close with their mothers and so forth. But I think that there's a, a, a large majority of people who have stuff, as my Jewish grandmother would say, they have shtiklach with their mothers. Right? <laughs> Ay -bay. Ay -bay. Like, oh no, you know, and that can also be mother-in-law issues too. So don't even get me started on that one. right? <laughs> so, you know, we're looking for approval, especially when we're a little child. We want, we want that approval. We want that nurturing. We actually have healthy human needs, not only to be held, and to be fed and to be comforted, but also to be taught and to be respected and encouraged to, to go for our dreams, you know, and to be all of who we are. And our mothers had their own stuff. Mm -hmm. So our mothers could only love us and teach us and nurture us to the degree that they themselves received that or whatever amount of healing that they've experienced since their own childhood. So my adoptive mother, the one who raised me, obviously, she was also very, very under mothered. 
Some people are under-mothered. Some people are smother-mothered. Some people have a bit of both, even from the same person. In some ways, they were not taking care of enough. In some ways, the mother was too controlling. You know, I had a pattern when I was growing up, which I think contributed to my having a lot of health challenges, which is uh, my mother and father got divorced when I was 12. And we went from a four-person household. My, my older sister moved out. A year later, my father moved out. So it went from four people in the nuclear family to just me and my mom. Mom went back to work. I became a latchkey kid. Uh -huh. And mom had not had satisfaction in some very significant ways, shall we say, in her marriage for 25 years. So when she got divorced, she went a little crazy. She went out to the nightclubs. It was the 70s it was before anybody even was worried about AIDS or anything. And she was coming home with all these men and very busy with her sexual rebirth. And I was a teenager and I didn't really get much attention. And the time I got attention was when I was sick. So it set up a pattern and a program that, oh, my mom nurtures me and I get touched and I get talked to and I get brought tea and I get loved when I'm unwell. So it's an interesting pattern that I had to identify. And now with my husband, because I have a supportive and very psychologically and spiritually aware husband, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I actually say to him, honey, don't just offer me tea and neck rubs and foot rubs when I'm sick. Offer me that stuff when I'm healthy so we can undo that that program, you know? So it's really interesting. Everybody has these these different patterns and it's it's especially challenging if you have a narcissistic mother, which is very common with women. Yeah, I remember you and I were talking about that. And I was like, oh boy, I totally understand that. Because mm -hmm. no matter what you do or say, a narcissistic mom is still going to be unsatisfied. She's still going to feel like it's not enough, you know, and she might put the guilt on. My mother is also Jewish, so we've got the Jewish guilt. Very good at that. I know there's also a Catholic guilt, right? <laughs> Right. So it's like, oh my. <laughs> so we have to do a number of things to heal all this. The mother wound itself, we could talk for hours. And I love helping people with this. And I actually have helped men as well as women. In fact, men get incredible, profound results when they get their, their mother wound healed, just as well as women. Oh, um, oh my it's gosh. so important because the way it impacts us, if we don't get it healed enough, is it blocks us from receiving. It blocks us from receiving love. It blocks us from receiving money. It blocks us from being healthy. It, it saps and zaps our life force energy. And we put so much psychic energy subconsciously into trying to manage, you know, the mother and her stuff or how we're feeling about it and the processing that we're going through. Or if people have cut their mother out of their life completely, this is just the one form of mother wound. We can talk about the other ones too forever. Um, that takes energy too. Like if someone had a mother who is so toxic that they're just like, wow, I don't have anything to do with my mom or the mom crossed over and they feel like, well, my opportunity to heal that relationship, it's it's gone. It, it did what it did. But no, it's or not you can do what I did, which is go take plant medicine. And while, while you're in the middle of a journey, have this awareness like, oh, I know, tough conversations. I don't have to be with my mom to do this. I could have it right here, right now. And it's probably more divine. Exactly. And boy, did I. And, and that you know is exactly right. And, you know, what I love about energy, I love about being in an alternate reality other than this thick reality here on Earth is when I go to that place, it's this. And I'm always so shocked because here everything seems arduous. It takes so much time. It's mm -hmm. And when I go, like when I'm with the divine on plant medicine, it's like, oh, that conversation, it's over. It feels like seconds and it's healed. And that is exactly why I love to support people with the healing at that soul level and at that soul to soul highest self level. And this can be done too with like spouses, ex-spouses, you know, <laughs> sisters, brothers, other people that you have a wound with. It's not only about mother. It just happens to be that the mother wound is very common and it's so primal and it's so impactful that when we heal seriously that one thing like to a significant degree it impacts everything 
every aspect of our life. We just yeah, feel liberated. So, we have so much energy. It's like a miracle of something. Of uh, if anybody's done this kind of literally where you, I don't know, you leave your body in a sense, but um, I've gone to the core of a creation. That's what I'll call it. Love and it. when I find out what the inception, what mm -hmm. aberrant belief or experience or situation created, that exact core pattern, is, yeah, right? Exactly. And then I discreate it into the no thing, which uh, is the darkness, the emptiness. Releasing. Literally, I can see the matrix, the entire thread. I don't have to know all of what it goes out to, but like a spidey web. You it know. Like, what? That's been affecting my career and my life and my love and my so body. Connected. Right? Yeah. And then you've got that space of beautiful, gorgeous nothingness into Open. it. You New can life. create and co-create that which you prefer. Bam. Yes. Boom. Woo. Exactly. Exactly. And we do that through what we call omnidimensional healing and omnitemporal and omni-universal. So we're healing it in all times, mm -hmm. all realms, all universes. And it's just completely the other thing that's so exciting that I'm glad I'm remembering to say, as you can see, I'm getting really excited, <laughs> is that when we heal, let's say the mother wound, for example, when we heal it at the original cause, it actually heals the entire lineage. It heals not just us, but it also heals our mother and, our, and the grandmothers before and the whole line of women all the way back. And it also heals our children, not only our female children, but also our male children, because we can pass stuff on unintentionally, of course, to our children. And so the, the years and the tears mm -hmm. of pain, the chains of pain and the years of fears, all of that is healed right here, right now, which is the point of power. And it heals it all the way back and all the way forward. So we're creating liberation and true soul freedom for ourselves and for our entire family lineage. That's how powerful this work is. Woman, I just had got such a huge aha. Thank you for that. Because I, like that I have been on such a path of healing for so long. I've done some deep ass work. Yes, I'm patting myself in the back because I've really showed up and, and gone there and done that. Oh, I see you have. And I uh, thank you so much. And I I humbly say when I heard you say that, I never considered that that's why my mom is saying for the first time in my life, I love you mm -hmm. and thank you. And she's thanking me. She's never thanked me for anything. It's really amazing. That so perhaps beautiful. that is the healing work and even most recently the plant that is she's yeah. feeling the healing that you have done within you exactly mm -hmm. and plant spirit medicine is one way to do that there's other ways to do that if not everyone can go to the amazon or we can't go to the plant spirit medicine every week or every month but it's a beautiful and powerful experience for those who are called to that um and i'm glad that you you know that that's the key is we have to trust what resonates for us? Where do we feel that excitement? Where do we feel that, wow, that is calling to my spirit and I need to say yes to that. And it doesn't matter what it costs or how far away it is or all that stuff. All those logistics will work out. We will manifest that. When we 100% commit to something, we're like, that thing is for me. That yeah. healer, that retreat, that program, whatever it is, that's for me. Okay. And we exactly we send that line out to the universe. We instead of saying how instead of saying I can't afford it or I can't do it, we say, How can I how can I make this happen? Universe, show me the way. This is for me. I'm getting a yes on this. Show me how. And it lines up. It absolutely lines up. And it's my honor to help people with this. I want to mention really quick, I know you mentioned my website a couple of times, prosperousgoddess.com. I want to tell everybody that there's three gifts there right now. Depending on when you're seeing this, gifts might be different. But I like to have lots of gifts and just shower everybody. One of them is a mother wound quiz. So if you're really curious, like, hmm, to what degree do I have a mother wound? Or what form could my mother wound be taking? Do I need support with it? Is it something I can do myself? Or, you know, it actually kind of quantifies as well as qualifies it. And it's a self-assessment. So it's a really, really empowering and helpful tool for everybody. And you can just pop over to prosperousgoddess.com. If you're on a phone, you might have to click the menu, you know, the, like the lines 
to see the menu in order to see the free resources. Thank you. That's beautiful. So there's a mother wound so quiz right for everybody. The, okay. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. I'm cutting it only because we're right here at the end. Okay. And um, I'm going to give a few more quotes and then we're going to like really bullet point wrap it up. We have a minute. It was Henry Cloud who said, boundaries define us. They define what is me and what is not me. A boundary shows me where I end and someone else begins leading me to a sense of ownership knowing what I am to own and take responsibility for gives me freedom. And then it was Brene Brown who said, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. Again, if you are interested in learning how to be interviewed and to get your message out to the world, to your tribe, to your community, so that you can finally fully use media, free exposure for what it's here for and do it correctly. Go to debbyd.net. We're here at the end with the beautiful Sage Kingsley Goddard and Sage, this is Dare to Dream. If you could quickly tell us, what are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams or goals? Oh, thank you. What a beautiful question. Can I share one quote first, Debbie? that I prepared because I, I think that it'll be perfect. And then I'll, I'll answer your beautiful question. The quote is this, when we heal our mother wound, we heal our relationship with the sacred feminine, with the earth, with our bodies, and with our innate right to thrive and be fully alive. We liberate our very souls and we reclaim our power and our ability to love ourselves and life itself. So that's a quote from my heart and soul to all of you. And what, thank you for letting me share that. What I am dreaming into my reality, because I know that uh, shamanically speaking, and I know that you get that too, as someone interested in and practicing shamanic healing, yes. the this world is also a dream. And the dream world is also a world of awakening. So our job and our joy is to awaken in both worlds and realize that we can shape both with conscious intention. So what I'm dreaming, I'd love to share more with you about that too. Uh, what I'm dreaming into reality is a world in which we love ourselves, we love life, we love one another, we serve, we prosper, we thrive, we shine, we speak our truth, and we live our peace. And that's what I'm dreaming into reality. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so being on the show today it's been a Thank pleasure so much. much it's a tremendous joy and you are doing such great work in the world thank mm -hmm. you debbie and blessings to everyone for your boundaries and your healing and for receiving and i end today's show with this quote from gerard manley hopkins which is your personal boundaries protect the inner core of your identity and your right to choices join me next week on dare to dream when i bring on my friend Kimberly Seltzer, matchmaker, dating and image expert. She's a blast. We have such a good time together. Learn the secrets to looking and feeling your best and getting dating confident with image consultant and dating expert Kimberly. We're going to have a blast. She and I have uh, the use of the word ish in everything. So <laughs> everything is ish. And what I told her is it's my favorite word, non-word, because it allows me to be non-committal about everything. So we're gonna have an ish kind of show. Join us next week. Subscribe to Dare to Dream. It's your number one transformation conversation. Please leave a review. And again, if you'd like to see my guest and I animated, talking, what we look like, and all the things that go on between us, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, the secret of success is knowing that you have the courage to begin in the first place. Thank yes. you so much for joining us today on the show.